Frank Hill or Warren. There we go. All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Thank you very much. Uh, today, uh, Doug Gamble is going to be sharing about uh, Good News Productions and a new, I hate to call it a program. Initiative. Initiative. Thank you. Thank you. That's a good, that's a good term to use. Uh, they are presenting, and uh, it's something that everybody can be involved in in one way or another. And I'm going to let him give all that information. Before Doug comes, let's pray, and uh, we'll get started. Thank you, Father, uh, that we can gather together today. I uh, thank you for Doug, and I just pray that you will give him the words to share today uh, as far as this initiative that Good News is presenting. Father, help us to be people who are involved, not just watching from the sidelines. Pray your blessing upon this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Doug. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good. Thank you for uh, letting me come, and thank you for, uh, I know you guys have joined together out of two Sunday school classes. I was asking if, if the Sunday school classes, you know, divided up by side of the room or whatever, if there was like some competition to see if you fill up it. But you did, you blended together, so you're actually like, being in the church. That's pretty nice. But otherwise, I was going to kind of do that whole thing I remember I was doing back in the, back in the youth group days or whatever. Well, we did at Ozark too, at the games, you know, where one side would say, we love Jesus. Yes, we do. We love Jesus. How about you? And the other side would do that and say, oh, wow, they could get, but... Since you're not divided up that way, I won't do that. <laughs> Safe on that one, right? Well, it is a privilege to be here, and uh, I was just telling Darren and I were getting acquainted or whatever, and uh, I've been in the area for a little while. I grew up actually in Oklahoma, not too far away, and then after went to Ozark, and then after Ozark, uh, was served in different different ministries, uh, different church ministries, mostly in Illinois, and the longest in, in, in Indiana. But then came back to the area and served with Water Gardens for uh, for five six years, and uh, then came on board for GMTI. I've always loved the mission of Good News Productions International, and likely some of you in the room have known GMTI maybe even longer than uh, I've been alive. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm 51, so you couldn't have because we're just GMTI is just turning 50, so you couldn't have known about them longer than I've been alive. However. You may know about them even more than I do, and I, what I love is that the, the longer I'm with GMPI, the more you know you get to kind of uncover about what has been and some of the things that take place. Because the remarkable thing about the ministry is that you don't, you know, you really can't talk about it in 10, 30, or three hour, three hours because it just there's a lot that's happened over the years, and you guys know that because Villa Heights has been involved with GMPI, partnering with GMPI for 41 years. So that's truly remarkable, and uh, mostly a lot of what I get to do is go around and just say thank you to our partner church. And I want you to know as we talk about some things today that that truly is the heartbeat, and I think you know this, that it is a partnership, that it's never ever meant to be transactional where it's like, well, we're going to support GMPI, and then GMPI is going to do their thing. We really, it's a family. Like when you're a part of GMPI or a partner with GMPI, it really is a family. And that's how we do it. I hope you do that as well. And I hope whenever you hear or you read an email or get a get a get a, a ministry report and you see some of the impact that's going on, I hope you feel like that you're a part of that because you you really are. <laughs> We're, we we do this all together. So I thought what might be uh, good today is to do really some kind of some overview uh, and also really hit and land on our new initiative called Mission 15, which. Is like like even like Steve was talking. Oh, go ahead. Okay. How long has Good News been in? Because I've knew about it since in the '60s. That is a great question. <laughs> Every fourth year was in on it. There you go. You got it. that's right. So we're we're almost 50 years old. We're coming up on 50 years uh, uh, of age, if you will, as a ministry. And it, it actually it all started. And I'll show you a picture right here. It all started with a challenge from a local tribe member to. Uh, to Helen and Zayden Nutt, and the, so Helen and Zayden were uh, missionaries in, in what was called Rhodesia then, and they were trying to you know, do, do everything possible to bring the gospel to that area, to that tribe, and they began showing what was very, very cutting edge, gospel film strips, right? They were showing gospel movies to these folks in Africa, and things just were not connecting, things were not clicking, they were not coming together. 
uh, because there is a cultural difference, right? So I think you, you guys, we all get the differences between even our own neighbors sometimes, let alone someone from a, a completely different country. I've heard Mike uh, Shragi, our president, say uh, in regards to where he and Carolyn served in Kenya that sociologists, as he was studying to go there and as he was there, he learned from sociologists that there were 73 differences between a, a U.S. American and a Kenyan. So, so right, so now we're, we're in Rhodesia for GMPI, but what my whole point to say is that that's a lot of differences, right? And so Hyatt is on that, showing movies made mostly in the United States for, you know, basically from, from our background and so forth. And they show this one, they show this one film in particular. There are others were not really connecting and not really working for them, but they show this one film in particular that, that shows a husband and wife going to church, going to a church building, and the husband opens the door for the wife and the wife walks in. Pretty innocuous, seems pretty common by our standards, right? They were like appalled. Like the, the tribe was appalled. the local men were appalled. And he didn't understand why until finally they got the communication to work. And the local people told him, they said that we would never let our wife go in ahead of us because the man always goes in to make sure the room is safe. Always goes in to make sure the building is safe. Well, totally different worldview, totally different mindset than we have here. And so uh, as those films were not working, this, this tribesman, which his name is Matthew, and there's, there he's getting baptized, he challenged Zion with just a simple question. Why don't you make your own film strips? <laughs> well, simple question, a <laughs> big challenge though, right? <clears throat> but that is indeed what started the whole thing uh, back in the day in them uh, creating movies, but creating really all kinds of media. And so when it comes right down to it, what we like to say, what we, wrong slide, there we go, is really we're all about creating media to share Jesus. At the end of the day, whatever we're doing, it's all about creating media to share Jesus. And we do that primarily through the 27 teams that we have serving around the world. Now, GMPI, you, I mean, has everyone heard of GMPI in the room? Most, most of you have Good. So I'll probably tell you some things that you don't know, and hopefully some little things that maybe you haven't heard or, or, or don't know about GMPI. And thank you, ma'am. I want everyone to ask questions. Because really, I'm here to serve you, to serve what question, answer what questions you have. Because uh, I can talk about things and you may already know all about it, right? Uh, like this funny story, I was preaching at Fairview Christian Church, and I stood up to preach, or right before I stood up to preach, uh, one of our staff members who goes to Fairview came up to me and says, Oh, hey, <clears throat> Zion and Helen Nunn just walked in the room. They're going to be here today. So that was fun, you know, being able to share about GMPI and the mission that they, they started. So. <laughs> thought they might want to learn some things about the mission. They didn't know. <laughs> anyway, so you might feel a little bit like that today, like I know that, but I think it's important, even as I talk about Mission 15, really at the end of what I want to share, and I'll share about it in, in the message as well, but it, it all really, it all, you have to kind of have this, this ground, this, this framework and this, and this groundwork for what we were talking about in Mission 15. But this is the goal, and here's the, here's the reality for us is that there are 6 billion people that do not know Jesus on our planet. Now, sometimes, depending on kind of what circles you run in, it may not feel that way, like around here or wherever you're at. But, you know, missiologists tell us 6 billion people, roughly two-thirds of the world's population, do not follow Jesus. And out of that 6 billion, half of them, or sometimes a little bit more than half, depending on the, depending on the, the year or whatever, about a third of the world's population do not even have access to the gospel. This is what is so like, mind-blowing to me and striking to me that there are still people in our world today that don't even have access to the gospel. And what I mean by that is there's not a church nearby, there's not a missionary in their village or in their tribe, there's not, maybe not even a Bible yet in their language, or they don't have access to a Bible, or they live in a country, frankly, that's very antagonistic towards Christianity and is going to do everything in its power to prevent Christianity from spreading the gospel message from getting to them. And so that's, that's the world we live in. And so that really creates for us then, you know, for GMPI, same as it was when it was started as it is right now. The opportunity for media is truly, truly astounding. Now, I do want to say, when I talk about media, we, we do produce all kinds of media uh, in, in the world or through our teams in the world. Uh, print media is still very, very effective, especially right now we're seeing print be very, very effective in the Ukraine. In the middle of a war, in the middle of their country being un under siege, 
soldiers are being given literature and books that our teams in the, in the Ukraine is producing, and it's really, really being effective. Like soldiers, of course, at a time of great crisis, at a time where they might die any given moment, and people are responding to the gospel. I love to hear stories like that. But something you might, hey, Damien, something I may not think about, you may not think about, is the, the effectiveness of still print media is still very effective. So when I talk about media, I don't want you just to think about video. I want you to think about all kinds of media. But we also understand the world we live in right now is very, very video-driven, right? So as you kind of read on the slide, if you, if you can see it from back there, 65% of the world has access to the internet. And then 67% have at least one smartphone. So more, way more than half, right, have at least access to one smartphone. In fact, this is really, really, this part, this what I'm about to say is really quite sad, actually. People are, uh, uh, sociologists, missiologists, and people that study this are telling us, or we're reading, that in the next few years, people are gonna have, that more people are gonna have access and have a smartphone than clean water. So, I mean, that's just, it's just the state of the world we live in, unfortunately. However, it creates a tremendous opportunity for reaching people that are lost, don't have access to the gospel. Because maybe they're cut off from any other sources of the gospel, but they have a phone. And they're on Facebook, or they're on Instagram, or they're on TikTok. Some of the things that we don't like, and we don't want to be, you know, we don't even put them to ourselves. Or some of, some of the things that we all are engaged in, right? They have those things, and so that is definitely the opportunity that God has given us in this day and age to reach into people's lives through the simple use of a cell phone. So somewhere, somewhere in between cat videos and the latest meme, right? <laughs> a gospel, uh, a little short, 15 seconds, 30 seconds gospel message based around something that's culturally relevant for their, for their, for their life, Little gospel message that Lord willing will keep interest and, and does all, all the time. Well, that's that's just really a little bit about the, the opportunity that, that we have. And so here's a view of some of our team. Uh, 27 teams in uh, 16 different countries. And when we talk about the teams of GMPI, we kind of talk about them maybe in two different ways. So we have our regional centers that are actually GMPI staff. The director's there and a lot of the staff there are GMPI staff. And so that's kind of our, our, our employee family, if you will, around the world. And you see where all our regional centers are at around the world. I think I said this, if I didn't say it, let me say it again, that our focus is, uh, I don't know if you put a percentage to it, but it is by, by and large, vast majority of our focus is international. So 95%, 96% of what we do as GMPI is international. And the reason for that is a few years ago, the team was really looking at where we could be the most effective, where the most opportunity is. Now, certainly, I think we understand we started as a missions, as a, as a, from a missionary in, in Africa. But as we were doing a lot of things in the United States for people in the United States, we began to realize there was a lot of other people doing lots of other things for people in the United States, English-speaking people. And so we really felt like, not to say that's not important, but to say, where's the most opportunity and where's the most need? And that's where we really have decided the most need really is in the other countries that doesn't have the access to the ability to produce media, quality media, whether it's Bible studies or it's gospel presentations. And so there's where we all are in our regional centers. And over here is our, our, where we're at in terms of our nomad teams. So nomad teams were created as a way to really support the spread of the gospel, but not have it all report back to GMPI. We recognize if we're going to be a part of helping reach 6 billion people in the world and support Christians around the world, it, it's not just one of us or two of us, one organization. It's, it's all of us. And so we were trying to find a way in which we could definitely support, definitely train, and definitely encourage and equip media missionaries, if you will, to produce their own content, to, to let that spread however the Holy Spirit wanted it to spread, however God wanted to use. And so that's really what the nomad teams are. These are men and women, oftentimes uh, young, uh, upper high school, college age, but not always. Uh, men and women being trained to how to produce, how to create and produce different kinds of media, whether it's a Bible study or whether it's um, 
a long form documentary or whether it's just a short uh, little thing that would go out on social media. And they're doing that. They're not staff at GMPI, but oftentimes there'll be a, a project that they want to do and we'll, we'll fund that for them and encourage them in that way as they kind of grow in their own development. And these are missionaries that are doing probably, uh, they're doing other kinds of things where they're at. They might be church planters. They might be just a straight up missionary that's going to another country. We've got, <coughs> Uh, I was going to talk about that in a second, but we've got Fernando, who was featured in one of our latest email newsletters, and Fernando is uh, going around Madagascar, and he's one of our nomads, uh, he's one of our, 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 our guys that have been trained through our nomad training, and his whole focus is to reach all 500 villages in Madagascar, and, he's a, and he, what he does is he goes around using our solar kits, and he shows the Jesus film. <coughs> And right now, he's, 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 reached, he's shown the Jesus film in 450 villages in Madagascar. I'm just like, he's busy. <laughs> he's busy. Love Fernando. I love his videos that he'll send us sometimes to say how things are going. He's usually in a car, like, driving. I don't know why. He's just always that. Or he's on the back of a motorcycle. He's, he's crazy. <laughs> anyway, love that guy. But that's the kind of idea. I want you to kind of capture that Fernando is part of the family, but he's not straight up. A, he's not strictly a staff of GMPI. He's doing multiple things, and, and we're we're supporting him in his uh, in his adventures. So so thank you. Forty one years, lifetime giving, and and these are things that we've tracked. There might be more than this. But that's beyond what I know. Eighty three thousand dollars that you guys have supported to make. To spread the gospel around the world, that is something to just feel good about. That you, like I saw on your website, Steve, right? Evangelize the, reach the, love the lost and proclaim the gospel, right? You're doing that. You're doing that here in Joplin and you're doing that around the world. That's something to be celebrated. I do want to just highlight last year, uh, you might have saw this in our ministry. Did you guys get the ministry report? Have you seen that? Okay. Steve got it. <laughs> and actually, I may not have grabbed those today. We'll make sure to get you some more if I didn't, if I didn't bring you those. Uh, but I do want you to see this just to, in terms of 2023. Was, uh, God really did some significant things. And any time that, that we show numbers, uh, just recognize there are faces behind these numbers. There are people behind these numbers. And so uh, three, three big ones that are important for us was that there were, uh, through our teams, uh, over 2,000 projects that were done. And so when we, that's significant because sometimes a project uh, is 52 videos. <laughs> it's like a weekly video that goes that. So when I say project, I don't just mean like one video. I mean like a significant uh, type of series that might be happening. Over 2,000 projects were produced. Uh, 60, over 66 million people were engaged. That means somewhere, I mean all across the world, 66 million people engaged with some kind of GMPI content. Somewhere. So significant, right, across the world that, that that many people were engaged. And then this is really, uh, really, really super important. Maybe maybe one of the most important is that over 56,000 people were trained in, in creating, producing uh, media of some sort to help spread the gospel, to help encourage Christians around the world. Because this is significant because it doesn't just... It doesn't just end with them, like it, it carries on in what they produce in the lives that they touch uh, continuing around the world. Um, thought it might be interesting for you to know that, that our, our productions, again, I mentioned print and radio also is a part of what we do. We partner with an organization called One Tribe and they, they particularly, they really specialize in using radio and we help produce that for them in different languages in Africa and their whole, it's called One Tribe because they're helping teach a section of, of Africa that has been war torn and split apart by different factions. They're helping to bring them back together, helping them understand that under, under God, under Jesus, we're one tribe. And they do that primarily through radio. So again, all kinds of media, but I did want you to kind of, uh, kind of in terms of an overview of what we do video-wise, it could be everything from 30 seconds to 3 minutes to, to 30 minutes short films. And when we talk about uh, the, three, the 30 seconds, it could actually be 15 seconds, if you will. Uh, but it's really kind of a unique way to, to get the gospel out there. And you, you guys know what I'm talking about. You see Facebook stories or these little things that pop up on Facebook, right? And that's, that's really what it is. In, 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 if it's created by people in their culture for their culture. Understanding what questions they have about their life. 
Uh, some of them are little short little segments of Bible teaching. Sometimes they're little, uh, they're little things about a cultural topic from a Christian's perspective. Uh, trying to like, create a little hook there. And then always, always, always what's so important and so significant about everything we do, particularly here and, and here, is that there's always some kind of call to action. So there's always some way, if somebody's interested in what they've heard, there's a way to respond, a way to message, a website to go to to find out more. And our teams are so good about follow-up. They're so good about reaching back out or, or messaging back people that are interested in, in finding out more about, well, you know, what, what, why, why do you think about it this way? That is totally different from everyone I know that thinks about this. And they have these kind of conversations and ultimately, ultimately get to present the gospel to them. Um, you know, there might be videos that are a little longer, and this, this is just one example from our Mexico, Mexico team recently. They uh, wrote original worship music. One of the needs they saw in, in Mexico in the area where they're at is that the churches were in need of quality worship music that was written from Spanish-speaking people, from, from Mexicans, right? And so they just thought, well, let's do our own, right? The heart of you're going right back to the heart of how GMPI got started. We'll just do our own. But they didn't only just write and, and create their own worship music. They actually produced uh, several music videos, and they are just, I'm just really impressed with uh, what they've done there. In fact, one of them, um, which you can see it here, I'll let it play. Um, I guess I'll mute the sound because, well, actually, anybody speak Spanish in the room? No? Okay. <laughs> well, maybe I won't mute it. Anyway, I'll let, I wanted you to see just the kind of the quality of what they produced. And this one in particular is, uh, I'll, I'll stop it because I, I can't even hear myself. <laughs> this one here actually features, uh, actually a world traveling artist. Gustavo, our director in our Mexico team down there, happened to, to know this person. And she's kind of grown in popularity around the world. And he, we reached out to her, she's a Christian, and said, hey, would you, how would you like to come and be in one of our videos and sing one of our new songs? She said, I would love to do that. And so that was pretty exciting. But uh, they've done a really good job. Like, it's, it's like top notch stuff you would see that, you know, in, in our worship service. There she is, that young lady right there. Then last year, uh, one of the things, one of the forms that it might take is a short form, form documentary. Have you guys heard of Where the River Divides? No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> no, okay. So Where the River Divides was actually a short, uh, short film produced in partnership with CIY, and it kind of originated because CIY last summer, well, before last summer, was looking for something to feature in their conferences over the summer. Something that would be obviously inspiring, something that would be a true story. And so Mike suggested to them the, the story of his friend David Ok uh, Okuf, who he knew from back in his missionary days in Kenya. And, and David has quite the remarkable story. Uh, when he came to faith, basically his dad tried to kill him by a witch doctor. And it's this remarkable story of healing that God provided for him. And then an even greater story of forgiveness and the spread of, of the gospel to his own dad and to his own his own tribe. And so I encourage you, there's a there's a I have a little card about it out there on our table. I encourage you to pick that up and it's free to it's free to watch on our website or it'll give you a link anyway to 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 where to watch that. It's uh it's truly a remarkable story that Really moved me. <laughs> Not ashamed to say I watched it for the first time uh, last year, and my my daughter had already seen it from CIY. But we watched it again with my uh, my other my other two kids and wife in our living room or whatever there. And I'm sitting over there, you know, I'm the dad, right? I'm sitting over there. I'm just over there. <laughs> Tears are streaming down the face at the end of the story because it's such a remarkable story. But uh, I think you'll be very I think you'll be very moved by that short film. Okay, talked about social media. I, I put this up there just because TikTok is like, it's on fire in Southeast Asia. Well, that's kind of funny that I said that that way. But anyway, it's on fire. They're like, they love it. Like, they're really, they're really uh, the, the message is really spreading through that. Um, you know, we have this uh, partnership with in India through Hindi Church Online. And so during COVID, like a lot of churches in the U.S., right, went online completely. Well, the same thing was happening for Hindi Church in India. Uh, couldn't meet in person, so what do we do? Well, with, we were already doing some production things with Hindi Church, and so they said, let's just put the whole church service online. And so they did, like a lot of churches did, right? And they've continued to this day. 
Uh, they, they meet in person, but they produce, uh, Good News produces this church, surf, church service for them every single week that is completely produced for the, the, online, uh, the online experience. And uh, last year, there were 400,000 people a week tuning in to watch this on Facebook and YouTube. This year, 600,000 are tuning in <laughs> to watch it every single week. And, and it's not just, not just people. Obviously, there's Christians that are watching that and, and being encouraged and being a part of the growth in, in, in their faith in that way. But there are people responding. That's what's always significant to me is that people are responding, messaging, trying to find out more. I, I love a recent story about a, a dad who had basically started making his family watch, <laughs> watch church online. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> anyway. Um, and he actually, the first time he messaged, he had reached out. He actually did so because his business was falling apart, and he was actually looking for some business advice. And he didn't know who else to reach out to. He thought, well, this, they look like they know what they're doing, so let me ask them. So he got a little business advice, and he got a lot of Jesus. <laughs> so much so that he did eventually come to Christ, and, and eventually his whole family actually came to Christ. So that's, those, are, those are cool stories to hear about and the impact that's happening through the various outlets, the various teams that are working with different partners. Uh, solar kits are still a thing for us. You guys probably have heard of that. That's, a, that's an old school thing that we've been doing for a number of years. I love this picture right here because it's a true, this is an actual picture of one village that forgot the, the whoever was there taking the, the movie to show. It wasn't Fernando. They forgot the screen, so they improvised. They brought up a cow. They, they just, I'm just like, this is the most amazing thing ever. <laughs> I love the ingenuity that they came up with. Um, we've, uh, we've been uh, remodeling our office here in, in, uh, at 2111 North Main, and uh, here in the summer we hope to do an open house, and hopefully everybody will, everybody will get an invitation, please come by. Uh, most of the, like, the office space is done, but what, one of the things that we're doing in there is creating a storage room <coughs> to really share the story over the years of GMPI, because there's just, again, there's so much, but they've got, you know, they have some of the old cameras got pictures from back in the day, all that kind of stuff to tell the story. But I've been, I've been really talking to everybody. Can you, can we not get like a cow, like a plastic cow, <laughs> something? We gotta put the cow in there. And this is just so, it's such a good. I, I thought there's gotta be a golden crown, an old golden crown that has the old cow, not in use anymore. We can put it outside. I, so far, they're not going for it, but I think it's amazing. I think it's an amazing thing. So anyway. Uh, Amazing Stories is also another project that's been done over the years. That's still going. 20 animated uh, video uh, stories told from an a eyewitness perspective. What I love about Amazing Stories that was produced a number of years ago that all the production was done in a Muslim majority nation, but it actually is in eight languages now. Uh, very effective for reaching kids and adults. And <laughs> the way we keep hearing about it over and over as being effective is like, you, well, we know, like, uh, and I'm guilty of as anybody, you know, you need 10 minutes of rest so you give your kid the iPad when they're young, right? It's true of all across the world, friends. And so they're giving their kids the iPad or the phone or whatever to keep them just quiet for just a short time, please. <laughs> and, you know, they're stumbling across amazing stories on social media, on YouTube, or wherever they're finding it. And then now all of a sudden, kid is asking about, you know, Jesus. They're asking about well, this story talked about Moses like this. What does that mean? And then now they're talking about Moses from a, from a Christian standpoint, standpoint. So anyway, it's, it's pretty cool. The Global Gospel is another project that's been, that's been going on for a number of years, still going on, 107 different short little uh, gospel videos. But what's, it's in 45 different languages now, uh, all these 107 videos, 45 different languages. But what's really cool about the recent years of how God, how Global Gospel has been used is that have you guys heard of uh, you guys have heard of the Bible app U version the Bible app it was created and produced by uh, by Life Church but so you know you might use it you use their their devotions their reading plans on there so one of the things a number of years ago that they were just really well still they're really were wanting they had a lot of stuff in English but not very much in other languages and so we've been partnering with them over the years to produce. 25, we've got 25 different U version plans, from, and then we're using the global gospel as kind of a basis to build a devotion for people across the world. And there's been 200,000 completions of these U version plans, so that's pretty significant. Uh, 200,000 of uh, these plans have been completed over the years. Last year alone, we produced 12 new plans, so that, that's pretty exciting to see that because, again, what I love about at the heart of GMPI is that it is about 
partnership. That it's not just, oh, look at what we're doing. Every time I talk about anything in here, it's always a partnership through churches like yourself and through mission, um, other missionaries around the world. Uh, and because that's what it's going to take. <laughs> it just takes all of us uh, to get this done. All right, I am going to stop yapping just for a second. I'm going to show this video. You might have seen it. If you haven't, it'll be good to see it again. Romans, half a century. Do you guys hear that? It's been creating media and sharing Jesus. From solar kids to social media, the gospel message has been on the move around the world. Because of people like you, the ministry is now 2017 strong in 16 countries. And with the inauguration of Nomad Academy, a new generation of media makers received training to create media and share the good news. In India, Hindi Church Online reaches hundreds of thousands of viewers per week. Projects like the Global Gospel and Amazing Stories connect with children and adults alike in their own heart languages. In fact, GMBI teams engaged over 52 million with the good news last year. But with billions still waiting, we must do more. So, where do we go from here? Mission 15. GMBI teams and partners are united around the goal of offering 1 billion gospel invitations by the end of 2030. But we need you to join us to reach this goal. It's easy. Simply pray, give, and share. You can pray for Mission 15, and then people all around the world will hear the good news. You can give $15 one time, or regularly. With every $15 given, 450 gospel invitations will go out. Just imagine the impact you can have over a year. And you can share with others how they too can be a part of sharing Jesus around the world. Do you know family or friends who can join you on this Mission 15 journey? By the power of the Holy Spirit and your partnership, we at GMPI believe this audacious goal is attainable to send 1 billion invitations to follow Jesus by the end of 2030. Will you join the movement? So Mission 15 is our initiative that we, we kicked off last year, and uh, it is not just a project. It's in many ways, you might look at it almost like a, a, a capital campaign in the sense that it's an overarching initiative to really, really focus and make sure that gospel invitations are, are going out uh, to the world. But what, what we wanted, wanted us to be is more than just like, hey, we're doing this. We want it to really be something that brings the church all around the world together. And the one thing that we can all do is that we can pray. And so we, this, Mission 15 has this audacious goal of, of sending one billion gospel invitations. And by that, what, I, by that, what we mean by that is that any form, whether it's print or radio, social media ad that's 15 seconds long, but they hear a little bit about Jesus in there, uh, that's a gospel invitation because it's a little peek of interest to, to something that maybe they don't know about, never heard about Jesus, or heard something, but not, not the truth about it. But we really, we really desire, or the, the goal, the vision is for it to be something that globally we do, we're doing together. <clears throat> and so the invitation is just very, it's very simple, is that would you join us in praying? In fact, I'll, I'll talk more about that in the service out there. There's a way to give, you know, we talked about that on there, $15 a month, a, a month? $15 a month uh, for, actually helps through our teams uh, because of their efficiency and effectiveness. 450 gospel invitations go out with just that. And, but the challenge is also that we're, we're all a part of this. You know, yes, we're tracking what we're doing through GMPI in terms of trying to send those 1 billion gospel invitations. But the challenge is that how can we all be a part of this? How can, we all, how can we all be a part of caring for those that are around us every single day as well as in the world every single day who don't know about Jesus, who are not following Jesus, to all be a part of, of this mission? So I really talked about the strategy, but I, just, I think the one thing that's significant that is, is important to know that there, there, you know that when we talk about a gospel invitation, that there's always a way to respond and that, that there's, in a sense, it's like a funnel, right? That you have the big open end of the funnel where all the gospel invitations are going out. It's what Jesus talks about, spreading the seed and spreading it wildly, right? But it doesn't always fall on good soil. But when it falls on good soil, the good soil people have a way to respond, right? There's a way to message, there's a way to email, there's a way to text, there's a way to, to get on a web page and fill out a form, all those kinds of things. And then there's a way for them to connect and to, to a church, to a missionary, to a group, to begin to walk in uh, walk in discipleship. Because that's what they want. We don't want them just to hear about the gospel and then not know what to do with it. 
We want them to be able to, uh, to connect in, 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 a, in a real way. So that's mission 15. Um, you know, our favorite, and I'll say it, you'll hear me say it again in my sermon because it's like the favorite. It's like the favorite illustration when we talk about uh, one billion gospel invitations. In our mind, I think one billion is a little bit like fuzzy, right? I guess it's a lot. Like, billion, that's a lot, right? <laughs> And sometimes I don't, I'm not sure that we even know or even think too much that it's that different from a million. But here's like the distinction. So if you lived 11 days, or if you lived a million seconds, you'd be 11 days old. Okay, so if you lived a million seconds, right, 11 days old. If you live a billion seconds, you'll be 31 years old. That's the difference. <laughs> so it's significant, and, but that's the, also the challenge that God has given for us that that he's a big God, so he doesn't bat an eye at one billion, right? He's given us a great opportunity right now with, uh, with the internet, with social media, with a phone and being in almost everyone's hand. But it takes all of us, right? And I, I really, I, I feel like we all should feel a, a part in some way. We don't do it all, but there is one thing we can do. There's one step we can take. And so that's what I would invite you to when it comes to Mission 15, of being able to, to pray for the lost. And really, you'll see, you'll hear, you're going to be like, I've heard this before. Yeah, I'm going to preach it in a second. <laughs> because we're so passionate about it. And this is what I love about, I, that's what I love about Mike, our president, that's what I love about GMPI, that even as, as, he, as we talk about it every single week, more than, just, more than just talking about the funds needed to do the things that we need to do to send the gospel invitations, we talk about prayer, about how can we get people on board to pray. So uh, I'll tell some more Mike stories. Mike at a couple of different places, you know, and when he's preached, I haven't had this experience, but when he's preached, he had at one church in, in, uh, in Utah, he had a lady come up to him afterwards and says, I, I, I know what you're doing. I, I know what you're doing, right? I, I hear you. I know you want us to, to pray. and I know you want us to get involved, but I'm, I'm just going to tell you the truth. Like, it's just easier for me to cut a check and then be done. He's like, what? What, what, what do you mean? He's like, that. He says, I know you want me to give monthly, and when I give monthly, then that makes me think about, oh, I should also pray, you know, but I'm just going to be honest, like, I'm probably not going to do that, you know? Well, I mean, okay, <laughs> we can feel a little bit of, a, maybe a slight little bit of judgment towards that person, right? But I guess I want to, I guess in many ways, it, it kind of opens our eyes just to reality, Right? That that's sometimes how all of us think in some ways. That we're just going to do the easy thing and not do the harder thing. Which in reality, for, for myself, is, is to pray. Uh, but that's, that's what we need. <laughs> because by prayers, this mission is activated. I mean, in fact, the quote by Andrew Murray is that mission doesn't happen without prayer. The mission doesn't happen without prayer. God chooses to partner with us in this way. And so, so we, we have this opportunity to do it. So I would invite you to do that. And uh, yeah, you have any questions? Yeah, I've got a lot. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> uh, GPI, is that international? Yes, yep. When did that come in international? Uh, well, I don't know when they added the international part, honestly. It was. Well, is it still out there on North Bay mm -hmm. where those buildings are? Yep, 20, 2111 North Bay. Yeah. I wondered if it was still there because I never see no cars up there. Oh, yeah, we're up there. <laughs> You're up there? Yeah, we're actually up there, and CIY is a little bit farther on, okay. and then there's a couple other ministries that meet in some of our, our facilities. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. getting the four years on the board, yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, Nathan? Nathan is on our board, and then uh, his dad is on Mike's strong okay. mission, strong mission board. Yeah. Okay. Because yep. they're the ones that started it. They're part of it, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, based on the things going on in the world right now, what is some of the greatest problems you guys need to overcome in developing areas, governmental, societal, I guess, uh, or even just the existing, I'll say, religions, yep. so, or a combination of them. Yep. Yeah, I mean, definitely in some of the, uh, for sure, Muslim majority, well, not only, but Muslim majority countries, it is it is hard, and that's where it's you're not as often able to directly contact people, and that's why this kind of indirect social media, internet, or YouTube is very very effective in that way. So some of it has definitely to do with that kind of area, uh, and the, and but also don't don't uh, 
not be fooled. Persecution is very, very real across the world. Just a couple of weeks ago, four pastors were beat, beaten almost to death in India. And India, in general, is supposed to be fairly open. It's not. It's not. But there's some very, very good things, you know, going on uh, despite despite that. But there's definitely an undertow of persecution. Um, you know, I, one of the things that we pray for every single day is for peace in the war-torn countries, particularly Ukraine, uh, and of course Gaza, Gaza, and Israel and Gaza, of course, along that. But then one you never hear about on the news is Myanmar, and our, our regional lead there, Timothy, is right in the middle of it. But they're still in civil conflict there this day and continues to go on. So that, in many ways... It, it impedes progress at times, and yet I think as we know when we read in Scripture, sometimes persecution heightens people's responsiveness to the gospel, and so we also see we also see that as well. Um, yeah, I think that's the some of the biggest challenges, you know, and that's those are really out of our control. You just kind of have to work work within the within the system. No, not we don't have a center in Canada or whatever. Yeah, just had probably the opportunity just hasn't arisen for us, you know. So, like, and it's kind of like our regional centers. We have in mind places we want to go and want to be, uh, but it's obviously always a matter of prayer and letting the Lord bring up opportunity. So you might, if you're on our newsletter, you, you might have heard about uh, Lillian and Lillian's in Armenia region, which is Middle East North Africa region, and she's. She's actually not officially quite on, on our staff yet, but she's we're almost there. But she's someone that independently has been doing this, and we're partnering with her to help her in that area. So that's an area, that North Africa area has been a huge area we wanted to like be able to, to have someone there, an office there. So that kind of developed naturally. Do you partner with Sermon's With Sermon's um, I don't. I don't know if we're on. I don't think that we're on there. Yeah, that's a good good question, though. Seems like that would be something globally used. Yeah, I haven't been on there in a while. They, they have uh, yeah, videos. yeah, and they're international. Yeah, that's that's a good idea. Question, yeah. Check into that. No, are there areas that? You're... Uh, we do. Uh, I'm not supposed to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Especially online. <laughs> yeah, because sometimes it is a little bit uh, more of a secretive type thing that happens, yeah. Everyone finds out. Oh, there you go. Was it something that was, you guys wanted to do as far as company? Or was it something you guys wanted to start because it felt like God was leading you guys to do it? Well, definitely Zion and Helen, it was a, a God calling. And they stayed in Africa for a number of years, and then um, their daughter got sick, and so they came back to the States for that, and that actually was really what, you know, created the U.S. base of it, and then it, that probably is really where it became international, because they were here, but they were really still reaching into Africa, and it spread, and it spread from there. Mentioned Ukraine a little bit longer than you. So, got you all torn up like that. What were you able to do? So, like last year, or last year they completed their, they published their 19th book, and, and so they're doing a couple of things. They've been continuing to write books and sometimes small pamphlets. And then Sergey, our team lead there, has continued to produce videos that go out through on YouTube and different social media platforms. They have the, with the soldiers particularly that I mentioned earlier, they have a partnership with a, uh, uh, it's a military academy, and within that academy there's a chaplaincy uh, department, and through them they're able to distribute this literature to the front lines, the soldiers on the front lines. Um, yeah, it's really been interesting uh, because uh, most of the, so some of the team actually has been basically forced to serve in the military. Some of the team has, has is living out of the country for safety reasons. But Sergey, our team lead, he's still living there. And like literally, like we've been, our office, our building that's there has been spared, thankfully. And Lord willing, will still be spared. But he stayed. He stayed to uh, do, do what he does. Yeah. 
They're in the heart of it. So they have church services a little? Yep. Yep. Or underground uh, often. I mean, you know, it's, I mean, they're. So are you able to reach those that have led to birth? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of uh, if we know, if they have contact info, yeah, they're still staying in contact. Going on in gossip? No, not from us directly. <clears throat> yep. Talk about using TikTok. China, uh -huh. all that. Yeah, China. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, in some ways, yeah. Some of it gets through. Some of it's filtered. <laughs> yeah. In the Southeast Asia, Asia, Myanmar, and. And, and all that whole area, that's still fairly, yeah, it, it, it gets through. That's the great thing about it, is that some of it gets passed. Yeah. <laughs> Produce enough of it, it gets through. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, I'm going to respect our time, and I'm, let me pray. Is that good? Yeah. All right, and then we'll dismiss. God, I'm so thankful uh, for Villa Heights. I'm so thankful for the ones that are here today. God, I just pray the blessing over them as a church as they seek to accomplish the mission that you've given them. Uh, bless them in their individual lives, in their neighborhoods, in their families, God, as they just are, are your uh, light to you wherever they're at. Uh, God, I'm thankful for their partnership with us. God, we are praying for those areas of the world that are under conflict in war. God, we are praying for peace. God, we are praying for people that don't know you, that maybe completely cut off from you, but God, you have your way. You have your way, God, of, of reaching to the hearts of people, reaching to people's lives in really remarkable ways. So we're praying, we're praying for that. Uh, God, we're praying for people to be reached to know you, grow in you. I pray today, God, that all of us are drawn closer to you. In his name. Thank you. <coughs>